What should you do if your Volvo Penta's seawater pump starts leaking water out of it? Well, you've got two choices. Either you can replace the entire seawater pump assembly, or you can rebuild your existing seawater pump. It's pretty simple to rebuild. We've got one off of an engine here on the bench. Let's take a look at it and see what we need to do in order to get this seawater pump pumping water through the engine instead of into the boat. Once we've got our Volvo Penta pump removed from the engine, we're going to need to do some cleaning because there was supposed to be a little rubber bumper thing here that centers this and dampens vibrations, but all of these seem to dissolve. So our first step is going to be fill a bucket with gasoline. Wait, wait a second. That's, that's the wrong channel for this. Ah, uh, whatever. Now, with our solvent of choice here, we're going to dampen some rags and clean this oily mess, or not oily mess, rubber dissolved mess off of our bracket as well as our pump. And I'd highly recommend some gloves for this because this rubber stuff gets everywhere and you need to be really careful because It'll get all over your boat when you remove the pump, if you're not careful. All right, we've at least got enough of the rubber off of there that we can carry on. So we're going to disassemble this pump. These have little eight millimeter bolts that hold the housing together. Okay, got our one last bolt down in there. Catch that. This out, we've got our impeller in here. So you wouldn't need to remove this whole pump if all you were doing was change an impeller, but we want to change our seal here and our bearing here because uh, in this housing, let me see if you can hear it. The bearing's getting a bit noisy and a lot of times the bearings in these will go because the seal goes bad and the seal lets water go through the bearing and it washes out the lubrication and then the bearing's ruined. At this point what we need to do is remove this bearing housing from our crank pulley. In order to do that we're going to need a two jaw puller. I will fit and see I get that down underneath so that we're not pulling on these ears because I don't want to break those ears off. This puller is small enough it will fit down underneath of the whole assembly. Then we just need to tighten this down. So our best way to do that is with some kind of an impact. Whee! Okay. With our bearing housing assembly here removed from our pulley from the crankshaft, we can set the pulley off to the side. We need to get this bearing out and this seal out. Now the seal is pretty easy because we can reach the back side of it through here and just push that out with a punch or something. The bearing is a little more difficult because we can't get to it from this side to drive it out that way. We have to pull it out this way. So in order to do that, I'm going to clamp this housing in my vise here and use this tool. This is a pilot bearing puller. You can rent these at your local auto parts store or there's a link to one in the description. You can get pretty cheaply online. These little fingers right here will go down inside of that bearing and hook on the bottom edge of it and then we'll be able to pull it up out. So spin this up to where it allows those to go in pretty small. Then we can set this down inside and tighten this up until it's a snug fit on there. Okay, so that's got a good snug fit. Now we just spin this nut down and we tighten this nut on the top and it pulls our bearing up out. And 
And there we have it. There's our old, not so healthy bearing. Pulled out and doesn't sound spectacular. Now this is easier because we can just pop our um, seal out. Honestly, I can probably just do that with a screwdriver palm of my hand. Yep. There's our old seal and it looks like it's a little bit tore up. Now when it comes to the new bearing and seal, I debated heavily because the kits that you can buy for these oftentimes come with just Chinese bearings, no name brand. So I got an SKF bearing, which SKF evidently makes their bearings in Bulgaria now, but SKF is a good trusted brand and I got a Timken seal. So the links to these are in the description if you want to use um, a better quality name brand bearing. These are the ticket. Otherwise you can just get the kit which I'll also link the kit because it is a bit more uh, comprehensive. You can just have everything all in one go. But basically we're going to take this and press this into here. Um, you could use a hydraulic press or a, uh, a bearing driver. They make like aluminum bearing drivers. Any of those options, we just have to put the bearing back in. I'm gonna use a little block of wood here so that we don't mar that surface where the impeller sits. That's pretty much it, because this one doesn't use a snap ring or anything like that like some other Volvo pumps do. This just goes in and sits flush, and there we have it. Now we can reassemble our seal and put this back together. Put just a little thin coating of oil around this seal, and then we're just going to press that in. Which way was that? in this way up. So it goes with the open end facing up. You can just push that in by hand. Once it's seated all the way down in it should be just below the surface. We have it. Now get our crank pulley back and we can push this down onto here. Now we're going to have to press this on to this, um, which what I may end up doing is setting this on top so that we have a way to press on this part and we're not hitting this with our press. So we can just set that on top and push down with the press. That's that. Now all we need to do is replace our O-rings, our impeller, and go put this back on the boat. And we've got a fresh seal and a fresh bearing. Listen to that. No more grinding noises as we spin that. Incredible. So we're going with an OEM Volvo Penta impeller kit. Um, that way we know we've got a good quality bearing, a good quality seal, and a good quality impeller. We've got our O-ring right here. Goes on there to seal our housing. Make sure that that's all the way down on so it doesn't get pinched or anything. Then we've got all the instruction manuals. We don't need those. We've got the impeller and a little packet of lubricant. So I'll set that down on there. 
take the lubricant and just apply that all around this rubber. Now if your impeller kit does not come with this lubricant, there's going to be a link in the description to some alternatives. It's basically glycerin, which is a water-based lubricant, so that it doesn't attack the rubber, such as an oil-based lubricant might. So, now that we've got the impeller on there, we're going to take this and just install our housing and rotate it until our spots all line up there. Then we can put our four bolts back in here. That's all there is to it. Once it's off the boat, it's a pretty simple process. Although you do need a couple special tools in order to be able to do it, all that stuff is down in the description below so that you can get this, save yourself a few bucks from buying a brand new pump by rebuilding your existing seawater pump. So hopefully this video has been helpful to you, gets you back on the water with water going through your engine instead of into your hull.